Maxwell 2D simulations uh, using, uh, I guess, ANSYS Electronics Desktop 2018.0 or R19. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, design at 300 kilohertz, so it's going to be an eddy current model uh, that's cylindrical about the z-axis. So uh, if you open ANSYS and you create a project, or just called Tutorial Maxwell 2D, insert a Maxwell 2D design, uh, give it a name, let's name it uh, Video Tutorial. So from there, um, I guess first things first, you right click on that new, pro new design, uh, you want to click on Solution Type, and from my, under the magnetic header, you want to uh, do a select eddy current, the radio button that says eddy current. And that's implying that we're going to be doing a design with a time varying uh, current source or current signal. And for geometry mode, we're going to do cylindrical about Z. And that's basically what that's saying is, you know, for a structure that is inherently cylindrical or, you know, if it's flat, say it's a concentric circle or just, uh, you know, symmetric, you know, a circle in general, um, that's always going to be symmetric about the Z axis or axisymmetric in general. So for our video in which we're doing uh, a coil with say 10 concentric turns, uh, this is the geometry mode that we're wanting to select. So from there, um, we're going to want to create our first conductor. It can be placed wherever with whatever radius, it doesn't matter. And let's make it make sure it's copper. And also let's make it a fun color, that's orange. And also ensure that solve inside is selected because we're going to be interested in uh, resistive loss as well as current density throughout the conductor. So we're wanting to solve uh, you know, for things that are obviously inside that conductor. So we're going to make this parametric. And what that entails is um, you know, we're going to want to be able to vary our radius. So let's give it a variable called conductor red. And you know, if we have, say we have litz wire, there's one you know, standard type of litz wire is 43 mils in diameter. So if we divide that by two, it's 21.5 mils. So let's make that our radius. And for center position, say we want this to be, we're gonna put, we're gonna make 10 turns of this. Uh, and this is going to be our outer turn. And so say we want the center radius to be, or sorry, the, the outer radius to be 40 millimeters. So, or excuse me. And make that parametric. So we're going to be making this variable outer radius length. It is uh, in millimeters or so 40 millimeters. You apply. Okay. You right click circle one, view, fit an active view, and that will you know put that conductor in the center of our, of our screen. So uh, you can see it right there. But you know, like I said, we're going to want to do 10 of these. So there's a tool that Ansys has that's called a duplicate along line up here. And so you select the conductor, hit duplicate along line, uh, select the conductor or uh, reference point that you want to move it from, which is the center in this case, and then move it inward. And it just lets you choose how many you want to duplicate or how many uh, total number of conductors you want. So let's just do 10. And then, so, I mean, but what we're wanting to change in this design, um, you know, down the in the next couple minutes, is we're going to be interested in how inductance and resistance changes as the gap between conductors changes. So the gap from here to here. Um, so from that, we need to account or make that parametric like everything else we've done so far. And uh, you go to properties. And then we have this vector, which we're, you know, how far we're moving it by. So first we have to account for the conductor diameter, uh, which is gonna be conductor radius times two. And then we're also wanting to give our new variable, which is the absolute gap between the conductors. That'll just be called gap. That's a length unit in millimeters. And for now, let's make it 0 0.1. So, and then you can see from here, um, to go to click on your project name or your design name. Uh, if we change it, you can see it updates accordingly from, from here. Let's do one. Okay, but let's go back to point one for now. Um, from there, we have to create a region which we want to simulate in. So first, let's just create a box. Um, let's say it's, yeah, open this up again, this dialog up, and say it's a 100 by 100 millimeter box. So starting point is at Z equals 50, make it 100 millimeters wide on the X and negative 100 millimeters 
tall in the Z. There we go. So let's make it transparent so it's not as ugly. Um, and from there, we want to create a boundary. We want to have a boundary condition uh, for our structure, which we're going to simulate within. So uh, for this design, we're going to use something known as the balloon boundary condition. And that's assuming that your structure is magnetically isolated. So you know you don't have any external magnet uh, magnetic, uh, I guess, applied external magnetic fields or anything that could affect your structure of interest uh, within this region. So uh, to do that, you have to click the, you know, press the E key, and that allows you to select edges. And you're going to want to select every edge of that region you just created. And then after you select all four, you right click, hit assign boundary, and balloon. There you go. And also, let's rename this to this region for the time being. So from there, um, we're going to want to add a, you know, we're just running down this list, and we're from boundaries to excitations now. So we're wanting to add um, a current source for each individual turn. So there's 10 turns, so we're going to want to have 10 individual uh, current excitations. And the reason for doing that is, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily apply to this video, but uh, for other setups, say you have your outer turn as a PCB, and instead of being a conductor or a, a single wire, you have four parallel traces of a you know, conductor on a PCB. And so those four parallel traces are going to have the same uh, parallel, you know, they're all going to have the same current. And But the way how ANTA sees it is if you just select all of them and say, uh, you know, assign parallel current or assign current, it will distribute that current evenly throughout. And it also doesn't give you necessarily accurate results for inductance and resistance. Um, so it's good to get in the habit of, even if it's a single conductor for each turn, um, you manually apply a current excitation for each individual conductor. So we're going to make this parametric as well, just call it I. Um, and also we're going to do solid wire instead of stranded, and that's because um, for ANSYS, they assume for stranded wire that the current distribution is uniform and proximity and uh, the skin effects are mitigated um, because they're assuming ideal lit wire. But, you know, that is not the case for, you know, that in an ideal world, yes, that's, that's true, but not for what we're doing. Um, and we're also interested in seeing how current density might look due to you know, proximity effect or eddy current um, effects from parallel um, conductors. So we're going to keep that as solid and we're going to do this for all, all 10 conductors. And also we're going to add current. This is, a, this is peak current. So if you want to do RMS, you have to convert accordingly. Uh, okay, so from there, let's just do nine more really quickly. Four. Halfway there. All right. Let's do this. And one more, and then we can actually do something fun. All right. So have those finished. Uh, so. You have these, you know, 10 unique uh, current sources. So from there, you know, within ANSYS, they're going to look at uh, individual inductance for each one of those, you know, generated by each one of those uh, current excitations and, you know, also resistance, etc. cetera. Um, but we can also group those together into a matrix. So if we right click, when we go back, right click, the sign matrix. Uh, if we just click on the include, a header that will select all of our sources and then in post processing we want to be able to look at inductance and resistance you know for all the all the conductors and not just one or you know two or three of them so we select all 10 the group there we go uh, next up we're wanting to do um, a mesh we're wanting to create a mesh for both the vacuum region here which is can be seen here and we're also going to do it for the conductors. So for the conductors, uh, if we select all of them at once, we can right click, assign mesh operation, and inside selection. 
click that. So this will be called uh, coil mesh. And so for us, if we're doing 300 kilohertz, our uh, skin depth is roughly in copper, it's going to be roughly 120 microns. So we do 0.12. Uh, that one's sure that our our biggest biggest yeah, excuse me biggest mesh element is uh, no bigger than one skin our, our skin depth. So hit OK with that. And then for the region, we're wanting to also generate uh, a mesh. So just click on region, right clicking, sign mesh operation inside selection. And this will be called uh, region mesh. And we can just go with the default of 20 millimeters. Okay, and then now we create our, you know, our solution setup through analysis, right clicking on that. So for this, um, Typically, Maxwell 2D for these very simple structures, it doesn't need many passes to fully converge. Um, even if you have you know, fairly low error, say let's just let's just say our percent error is five percent for this. Um, so that's really the only thing we're changing here. And max number of passes is ten. We'll be able to solve each pass under under ten for sure. Uh, minimum number of passes, though, just to ensure that our delta energy or our you know, delta L or delta R isn't too great between passes. Uh, it typically studies out or, uh, you know, kind of converges towards zero after around five passes or so. And then after that, um, you know, you can also say we want, after like just having a minimum number of passes, if we're wanting to make sure it's, you know, very well converged and there's, you know, maybe 1% error between all converged passes, uh, that that's you know we can increase this number to ensure it's ex, you know it's extremely accurate um, and our mesh and everything is pretty pretty stable by then. Um, but for this, we can just leave it to one. Um, it's, we can also have it converge about loss. So if we're looking at resistive loss or you know power dissipation, we can click that. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, expression expression cache. There's a kind of a bug with an ANSYS where we can't, it says it's not available until after the solution has been created. So basically if we go through this and hit okay, we'll just reopen it in about a minute and uh, you know be able to fill this out. For the solver though, we're doing our simulation at 300 kilohertz. Uh, leave this value the same. We're not doing any frequency sweeps and our defaults, we're, we're not changing anything. So we hit OK, but we're wanting to go back into it and look at the expression cache. And now you see you have this, this totally different interface available to you. And we're wanting to, you know, for that matrix we created for all those 10 conductors, we're wanting to ensure that the inductance um, and resistance measurements are our resistance calculations are all also converging in addition to the delta energy. So we would add L for group one, which is related to the matrix that we created. Um, we can also add R. And we're also wanting to create our own variable. So we go here to output variables, and we're looking to create a uh, uh, variable for quality factor. So from there, you know, quality factor is just a, uh, it's a pretty simple equation where we're just looking at inductance, multiplying that by omega, which is two times pi times the frequency of interest, and dividing that by the resistance of the group. And from there, we have quality factor. So we add that, and there we go. We're done. And now we can add that into our calculation as well. So, and for all of these, we can, let's just say, I don't know, let's say 10%. And let's make it up 10, why not? Or for resistance, yeah, let's say 10% again. Quality factor. And then we're going to want to evaluate that versus pass. So um, since we're not doing a frequency sweep, we're wanting to select this option uh, because if we do not select one of those options, it will not let us continue uh, from this window. So, and then from there, um, so earlier in this video, we made the gap between traces uh, parametric. So that's what we're wanting to do now, where we are doing a sweep of that gap. So if we right click on optometrics, add parametric, hit add. Um, as you can see, we can change a bunch of things. We can change current uh, and all the other uh, parameters that we had created earlier. But we're wanting to do gap and say, 
we want to get between 0.1 millimeters and one millimeter the step of 0.1 so that gives us you add that and that gives us 10 different options uh, and then you know from table we don't change anything general we don't change anything calculations similar to our analysis we're wanting to calculate for each each sweep we're wanting to calculate inductance resistance and our output variable of quality factor so we have those um, and then go to options we want to make sure we save our fields and mesh because that's necessary to calculate inductance and click that and we hit ok uh, from there we're wanting to display the results later so we're going to be interested in say we want a table or say we want a plot of uh, Let's see, we want a rectangular plot, and we're wanting to see how, you know, as we were saying, inductance, resistance, and quality factor changes as a function of our sweep, which is gap. So we have gap, um, we add that. Resistance, or sorry, inductance, we add that. Resistance, we add that trace as well, and quality factor up here. So looks like I accidentally double clicked, so. We can name this L and R and Q. And after our simulation runs, then we will see uh, some traces displayed here as a function of the gap, which is the x axis. And from there, um, our setup's basically complete. We go to this ribbon bar and hit validate. And we'll see that there's a warning. Um, it's, if we X out of it, we can look at this warning here. Any effect settings may need revisited due to the recent changes in the design. Basically, this is Ansys wanting you to make sure that you double checked that uh, there are any effects felt in the conductors of interest. So if you go to Maxwell 2D, excitations, set any effects, uh, all you have to do is just open it and close it, and then it's and just sees it as you double checking. So it says okay. And from there you hit analyze. Um, so from that, I already ran this, so I already have a, a solved. Uh, model. So if we go to that really quick, we you know see it's the exact same as what we were just looking at, but we're wanting to look at a few things. So we click on our plot, and we can see you know blue line is a quality factor, and then you have inductance and resistance, and you can see how that varies as a function of the gap. Um, but from there, so that's you know that's something you can export if you right click, you can export into a CSV file or uh, text file or you know things like that. Um, but say we're also interested in looking at looking at our mesh and seeing how well our our mesh is and current density and things like that. Um, so what you would do is you right click and uh, plot mesh, and what that will show you is something like this, which shows you the mesh in you know just that conductor, but you can do it for all conductors in the region. And you can see you know it's I'd say it's a very well uh, defined mesh. And will give us you know, good results for current density. Um, from that, say we're wanting to look at current density in this conductor, so you'd right click it, or you first left click it to select it, then right click, and uh, you go to fields, J, and J at phase. And from there, it'll prompt, uh, give you this prompt, and you just hit done, and it will you know, it'll display it. So let's, let's do that. And here you see current density in our uh, conductor, and you can see you know there's some obvious skin effect and proximity effect, and you know eddy current effects happening right here. Um, but then say we're also looking at our magnetic field, or we're running to look at the B field in this overall region. What we do is we select the the region, uh, right click, and hit fields B mag B, and hit done. And what that's going to give us is this plot. So you can see, you know, uh, how the magnetic field varies between uh, as a function of distance. And if you want, you can also create, you know, a non-model object, say a line up here, and you know, plot it. Uh, you know, say you want to plot it in the X right here. Then you can, uh, from there, you can plot the uh, B field strength as a function of distance over that line. Um, so yeah, I hope this has been informative in. You know, kind of setting up a basic Maxwell 2D design uh, for eddy current simulations, and yeah, hope hope you uh, learn one or two things from it.